Good morning, everybody. Yeah, it's an exciting web summit going on here. So one of the questions I think you might have is, I am the chief technology officer of a hyperscale public cloud. But Thanks I'm up here talking about redefining the on-premises data center or the hosted data center. And so why am I doing that? Let me have you help me answer uh, that question. How many, of you, forth, so, yeah. how many of you are going to take your businesses 100% to the cloud in the next 12 months? 100% off-prem. Anybody? One, one couple? How many of you, on the other hand, see yourself taking a journey to the cloud that's going to be 10 years, five to 10 years. You're gonna have a, some stuff on premises for some period of time for that kind of duration. How many fit into that category? So I see a lot more hands go up in that case, and that's exactly what I'm here to talk about. How can software-defined data center help you make a transition to the cloud at the pace that you wanna make it, where you can get the benefits of cloud on your own terms? When I go, and just to, to tell you why I was motivated personally to give this talk. My uh, customers oftentimes come to Microsoft and ask us to help them with their cloud journeys. And, and I see the entire range of spectrum from a company that I met with two weeks ago. It's an insurance company based out of the Netherlands that their CEO has said, our colo leases expire in two years. We're going to be out and in the public cloud when that deadline hits us. But the more common case is a company that says, we've got a large on-prem infrastructure. We're going to, of course, do some data center consolidation. But we're going to be on-prem and keep some applications and data on-prem for at least the next few years, maybe even a little bit longer. And the reasons vary from data sovereignty concerns, data has to be in a certain place the public cloud's not yet reached, to security concerns with the public cloud, I've got some super secret sauce that I don't want to expose to the public cloud right now until I fully understand security in the public cloud. Two regulatory concerns. Uh, there's public cloud in a certain, might be in the place that I need to be, but it doesn't have the certifications that my regulators are requiring me to apply to my data. So all different answers or reasons why companies are staying with on-prem. And that's where Software Defined Data Center comes in. It is modernizing your data center footprint to be able to take advantage of the same trends that are happening in public cloud computing, but do it in a, in a private computing context. And this space is one that's exploding. So software-defined data center is a term that has been used now for several years. It is already disrupting the on-prem data center. And this statistic gives you an idea of just how many companies are going to be living through this transition in this way, modernizing their data centers as they ultimately believe most of their workloads even still might go to the public cloud. So what I'm going to do in this presentation is talk a little bit about what is motivating software-defined data center. Then I'll talk a little bit about what is software-defined data center. And then I'll redefine it a little bit from where the definition, I think, currently sits with most people. So. IT has gone through a revolution in the last 10 to 15 years, and that revolution is virtualization. And virtualization has really driven efficiencies into data centers on premises. The consolidation of workloads onto virtual machines has allowed the IT to deliver applications faster than they could before with more efficiency to utilize the assets that the companies purchased in their own data centers. But it's kind of plateaued in terms of just how much efficiency can be delivered with respect to the value that businesses are now demanding. And as we know, what is driving really public cloud are a couple things that IT is able to get out of public cloud. Self-service on-demand access to compute resources and applications. And the same, those same desires for public cloud is, needs to be satisfied with private cloud or else private cloud really is not going to be meeting the demands of the business to be agile and to be delivering the value to the company that the departments want to deliver. If you take a look at the share of IT spend, less and less IT spend, even though IT spend is growing less as a percentage-wise is going to be going to IT versus the application 
developers, the business units that are going to be developing applications on top of that IT infrastructure. So it's IT's responsibility to create an infrastructure that propels that business value up at the application layer. And that's where software-defined infrastructure, software-defined data center comes into play. So what is software-defined data center? Again, if you take a look at that virtualization disruption in the last 10, 15 years, and you take a look at the way IT has delivered applications to their companies, they focused on really maximizing efficiency for individual application stacks. And this is where IT has provided value. Company or a business unit comes and says, I've got an application I want to develop. IT then goes and purchases the servers that are perfectly tuned for that application, purchases network devices that provide the functionality that that application demands, and then stands that up. And what you end up having in such a trend is a data center that's highly complex and fragmented, individual islands that were created just to serve specific applications. And that means a lot of care and feeding that is unique to each of these application silos. With software-defined data center, you want to remove the friction of IT from the provisioning of applications. And that means a standardized data center, one that is built on commodity hardware, where all applications can run on a standard set of hardware. And this is kind of inspired by the hyperscale public clouds, which are fundamentally built on standardized commodity hardware. With standardized commodity hardware, now you have fungible resources. You can take applications and move them around. You can have them expand. But to really deliver applications at speed, you need automation. And you need automation to take care of that infrastructure to make it more resilient, because anything that is a snowflake becomes something very fragile. So you treat these things as a common fabric where you can apply automation at scale. And that means you're spending less of your time managing these snowflakes and more of your time building layers of software on top of that infrastructure that allows the companies, the business units, to go deploy their software. And of course, everything is highly virtualized. And I'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by highly virtualized in a second. Now, this slide is a little bit technical, but I wanted to just break apart what Software Defined means by taking a look at a specific example. And this is in the area of networking, which is one of the places where you've seen a lot of innovation in the last 10 years, 5 to 10 years, of redefining what networking means by putting networking into software. This is right here a traditional network appliance. It's the one we all know and love. It's a hardware load balancer. It's a hardware firewall. It's a, a hardware-based virtual uh, appliance, one that is doing network intrusion detection, for example. Everything is baked into that appliance, and it's a, typically a proprietary appliance. You've got the management software in there, so you connect to that device either through a web browser or command line scripts, and configure that device. Then the controller in that device is baked right into the data plane. All of the data from the network flows through that device. What that creates is a device that, is, that can't scale, that is expensive, and becomes a single point of failure. And such devices just were not commercially viable in a hyperscale public cloud. So again, hyperscale really drove network virtualization to explode that proprietary appliance into software and push as much of the functionality into standard software and into commodity servers. And so if you take a look at any hyperscale public cloud, that appliance, which might be a firewall or a load balancer, now is 100% implemented in software on top of commodity hardware. So there's APIs that are standard REST APIs, not proprietary custom APIs, that allow the network automation software as well as higher level management software to come and configure firewalls or load balancers on demand. And those APIs then talk to controller software, which is written in modern microscale services architectures that can scale out, be highly available, work across commodity software. And this is the way you get scale and automation. And then at the bottom, now you're talking about the uh, commodity compute servers that happen to be serving network functions. And they do that by putting network virtualization into the software that's running on those servers. 
This is exactly the way that the firewalls, the plumb access control lists into virtual networks in Azure, as well as the load balancing software in Azure and other hyperscale public clouds work. This is really fundamentally what software-defined data center is. And this type of virtualization of pushing as much as you can into software and taking it out of, of proprietary hardware is being applied across compute network and storage. And it's being applied now in ways that are saving companies tremendous amounts of money. I was just talking to a company a couple weeks ago that has moved from a SAN to commodity software-defined data center storage. And it saved their, their SAN costs were $370,000 a year by moving all of that into standard software on top of commodity servers, their costs go down to $60,000 a year, and their performance went up by 4x over what they got out of their SAN. And their management costs go down as well on top of all of that. But it's not just enough to be hyper uh, virtualized and to be software defined virtualized in this way. That's great for IT if you just stop right there, because now IT can automate and run at scale very efficiently. And IT can do a better job of moving workloads around the data center to the places they need to be. But what ultimately the businesses are looking for is exactly what's driving shadow IT and the desire for businesses to move to public cloud. And that is all of the characteristics that NIST defines as public cloud. These are all things, how could you not want the ability to go and deploy an application with a click of a button in a portal? To be able to go to a service catalog and say, I need these services to compo be composed together, and now I can deploy an application that if I had to do it on my own from scratch, or I had to procure it through the normal IT procurement process, would it take me weeks or months to get up and running? You want a multi-tenant fabric, because now you don't want applications to be constrained into individual servers and assign those servers and have to keep those servers there for those applications where the applications need them or not, but rather support elasticity by having a multi-tenant fabric underneath so that applications can come and go. I can do a drop a dev development, dev test version of the application, dev test it, and then pull it back without having to go and procure special hardware for it. And I also can take advantage of that multi-tenant fabric and elasticity to grow the application if it needs to grow. So when the load comes for the application, I can simply scale it out. I don't need to call IT to scale it. It scales automatically. And when that load goes down, so it might be some application line of business application I've got that at every, the end of every quarter gets hit with load as I'm doing end of quarter processing. I, it scales out on the multi-tenant fabric. At the end, when it's done, it's finished, it's processing, it scales back down, and now I've released those resources for use by other applications. Exactly the same concepts that are being applied in public cloud, but being applied now in a private cloud context. And then finally, metered. And this is an important concept, something that IT hasn't really done before. IT, in the very customized frameworks of applications purchasing servers, of course, the metering comes at the time of procurement. You've just purchased this server, basically, for this application. These are the network appliances that go with that application. Here's the operating systems and the other package software that goes with that application. But it, when you've got an environment like this, where things are so dynamic, I'm going and deploying dev test applications, I'm scaling out my production line of business applications, you need to keep track of costs in a different way, and that is through the use of metering. What resources are these things consuming? And it's not. It's just that you're having these business units paid directly for these costs, but you want them and the business to understand where costs are going. And so just like public clouds do metering, you want your private cloud to have metering capabilities as well. So the, the business units can understand how much is that line of business app costing me? When it scales out at the end of every month, how much is it costing me? And this can provide incentives for them to be efficient as well. Because if you don't have metering and you don't have a way for them to have insights into their costs, of course, it might be take, uh, easy to take a shortcut and have that scale out application be constantly scaled out rather than do the extra work of making that application dynamically scale. So giving them the cost back and an insight into that is what can motivate them to really create a modern cloud application. And it's only by taking advantage of cloud 
infrastructure on top of software-defined data center technologies, the hyper-virtualized data center technologies, that it will enable your businesses to take advantage of the key trends that are disrupting cloud computing today. And one of them, and I've mentioned this already a couple times, is microservices, orchestration, and containers. Every modern cloud-native application is being built with containers, with orchestration and microservices platform as a service on top of it. And this doesn't just apply to public cloud, but line of business applications and on-premises applications have to take advantage of these same trends to be competitive. Because if you're not competitive in your private cloud, you're just company's not going to be competitive all up. And these kinds of applications require that kind of infrastructure underneath them that I just mentioned. An elastic, homogenous commodity server infrastructure to support the clusters that these kinds of applications run on and can elastically scale up and down on. And if you fully realize the true promise of software-defined data center, redefined by saying it's got cloud as an integral part of it, you get to an ideal nirvana place, which is I, my business units can develop applications that they can deploy to wherever they want to, however they want to. Again, if you're going to make this transition to the cloud over the next few years, five, 10 years, whatever your rate is, whatever your pace is, the worst thing in the world is to have two different worlds, one that's your on-prem world and one that's your public cloud world. Ideally, you want one world that spans these places that you're going to be operating so that your business units can develop an application. And they'll say, today, you know what? It's going to run on-prem. Tomorrow, I might move it to the cloud. Or even today, if it's going to run on-prem because that's where it's going to be in production, I can dev test it in a public cloud where I can take advantage of more elasticity and I'm not having to buy extra capacity on-prem for my dev test resources. The true nirvana that can be realized, which is really taking advantage of all the principles of public cloud, applying them to private cloud, and getting into a state where ideally you're spanning both. And so with that, I just want to wrap up by saying that if you're not taking a look at your on-prem infrastructure and redefining it with software-defined data center on cloud, your company is just at, not going to be competitive. It's something that if you're, you, need to get to, you have to redefine your on-prem infrastructure. One of two things will happen. You won't have a job, or your business units just simply won't be using your on-prem resources and find every way to bypass you and go find a place where they can get done what they need to get done. So with that, I want to thank you very much. I hope you found this interesting. Hope you have a great rest of Web Summit.